Chris Bukowski of Emerging Civil War. I'm with Greg Wade, co-founder of the Franklin Civil War Roundtable. And behind us is the most famous landmark in the Franklin Battlefield. This is the marker for the Pizza Hut. Correct. <laughs> Correct. The famous Pizza Hut. Uh, if you're familiar with Franklin at all, you, you will know that there was a Pizza Hut restaurant standing at this site. And back about 2003, an author by the name of Adam Goodhart came to town and did an article for National Geographic. And it was part of a series of articles about the bad state of many of the battlefields across the country. Franklin was the poster child at that time. So in 2003, this Pizza Hut was shown in the National Geographic magazine, which I have a copy of, by the way. Things happened, uh, city leaders got involved, uh, a group called Franklin's Charge came together, led by some very influential people here in town, Robert Hicks, Julian Bibb, Ernie Bacon, people like that. And we built a coalition of groups, started working with the city fathers who started understanding what heritage tourism could mean. Long story short, the Pizza Hut people sold the building at a very fair price. And, and you said they were willing sellers? Willing sellers. There had, by the way, there's been no eminent domain use of any of this work here. Everybody's a willing seller. That's a very important yeah, point. Right. And we knocked the Pizza Hut down here in 2005, which began the regeneration and the reclaim of the battlefield here around the Carter House. Now this marker behind us actually is not for the Pizza Hut itself, but it is probably the most famous spot on the battlefield because of who this marker represents. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, General Pat Claiborne, many of you know, was one of the Army of Tennessee's premier generals. Uh, he was an Irishman, came to the United States, and he was a division commander uh, with the Army of Tennessee. Known as a, a great fighter, he proved himself several times. He proved himself at Missionary Ridge, at Perryville, etc. Uh, he thought that this attack here was going to be a useless waste of lives and even expressed that to General Hood. But nevertheless, he did his duty and we think he was killed right in this area here. We don't know exactly the, the literal spot, but this is probably the area where he lost his life. Uh, known as the Stonewall of the West because yes. he was so effective. I mean, he really, he saves the army after Chattanooga. Well, you know about, you know, you know about Pat Clark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, Tell me your, your thoughts about it because, of course, he's the one who famously suggests they emancipate slaves in exchange for their service in the army and it kind of stymies his career. Some say it ruins his career. That's, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it was the winter time of 63, mm -hmm. 64, when they were encamped at Dalton, Georgia. That was during the Atlanta campaign. Claiborne advocated to the Confederate High Command that they, as you just said, uh, take uh, uh, colored troops in in exchange for their freedom. And you're right, it was it seemed to be a career ender for him in terms of, of further advancement. Ironically, in the spring of 1865, there was the Negro uh, Soldier Act that was passed, which did exactly what Claiborne suggested, but it was too late by that point. Way too late. No, no actual black Confederates made it into service on the field. That's correct. But by that point, Confederate fortunes had shifted so much that uh, Claiborne's prescient suggestion, which was politically impossible at mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm. becomes a political necessity mm -hmm. by that point. That's correct. The, the problem with Claiborne's suggestion was it would have been a, a, an omission that the black soldier or the black man could be equal to the white soldier, and that did not go over well during that time. Claiborne has one of the most famous quotes about the battle. Uh, my emerging Civil War colleague, Lee White, titled his book about the Battle of Franklin after this quote, um, where he sees how hopeless this charge is going to be. He knows he has to do his duty, and he says, Well, go, man, if we're to die, let us die like men. Let us die like men, and he does. He's one of six Confederate generals who died during this battle? That's correct. So. Uh, six Confederate generals died here. Uh, a couple others passed away later on from wounds, I believe. Uh, but it, was, it just decimated their high command. So. We are getting the distinct treat of a tour of the Franklin Battlefield with Greg Wade. He's the founder of the Franklin Civil War Roundtable. We're gonna have more from Franklin in future videos, so stay tuned. I'm Chris Mikowski for Emerging Civil War.